Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here with your weekly edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, that off-season video update that I do, where we take a look at some of the things that will shape the upcoming hurricane season. But this week, that part's going to be pretty short, and we're going to focus a lot more on this major winter storm that's impacting the Northeast right now. I'm actually up in New York State covering it. I've got some camera systems set out. I'll give you a tour of where we have those set up on our interactive tracking map. And we're testing some new data transmission for live weather data with those camera feeds at the same time. Very exciting as we get ready for hurricane season, which is now just four months away. And I know that might sound like, oh man, come on, it's four months away. Well, just think about it. At the end of February, which is a short month, it's only going to be 90 days till hurricane season. And it'll get here before you know it. So as we always do, once a week at least, we take a look at what might shape the upcoming season. And in this case... That's our favorite go-to map, and that is the sea surface temperature anomalies map. And as you can see, the La Nina generally holding on here in the Pacific, not much change there. A little bit of a warm-up here in the eastern Pacific, but that will be transient. As I mentioned last week, I think the pattern's going to flip back, and the easterlies are going to resume through here pretty significantly. And the La Nina is probably going to stick around uh, through the summer, at least, and maybe cool neutral. But I don't see much change in that for the Pacific. Certainly no El Nino in the cards from what I can tell. And in the meantime, the main development region remaining warmer than average, especially out here in the southeast tropical Atlantic, the northwest Atlantic, quite a bit warmer than it should be as well. And even the Gulf of Mexico has this one area in the middle of the Gulf all the way up to the central Gulf Coast that's abnormally warm. But we don't worry about that too much for the upcoming season, the hurricane season, because the Gulf is always warm enough for intense hurricanes. I watch this for storms that might get their start across the lower tier states and maybe move out into the Atlantic, these Miller A systems, maybe spring severe weather season when you get these lows that come down in the plains, tapping the Gulf moisture, you know, these anomalies down here. Moisture is energy. It holds heat. And we watch that. So no real surprises or anything of concern in the Gulf of Mexico this is a lot more interesting, as I mentioned, and so is this, which is affecting uh, the weather for North America as it is. And I'll show you how, what I mean by that in just a moment. So going out into the future, uh, I want to show you this upward motion forecast from the EPS, the Ensemble Prediction System, from the ECMWF. Fancy way of saying, and the overall look to this is, here is the present, here's where we are now, and we have generally sinking motion over here in the Atlantic Basin. That's how you translate this to the geographic area, spatially as we call it. And then we have generally rising motion right now over here in the Pacific. But going out into time at about mid-February, I'm going to expect a pretty drastic change, one that favors more sinking in this region and more rising in the Atlantic, back to that typical La Nina pattern is what it comes down to with a strong rising branch over the Indian Ocean and parts of Africa sinking in the western and central Pacific, maybe even in the eastern Pacific, with rising continuing off of Africa into the Atlantic. Again, that La Nina pattern holding on. I don't see much change in that anywhere in the modeling, whether it's the Euro, the JMA, uh, the CFS long range forecast, all of it suggesting that even though it's four months away, the Atlantic hurricane season probably starts off busy once again. How busy where they end up? No way to know that right now. But these larger puzzle pieces remaining fairly in focus for another active season ahead. All right, so let's take a look now at what's happening currently. Instead of thinking four months out, this is what is, what is what's happening today. Uh, low pressure here off the mid-Atlantic, about 992 millibars, not too intense. There's enough high pressure up here uh, at the surface to create a gradient, the pressure gradient down here, squeezing the, uh, the wind, if you will, putting the squeeze play on it. And you might see some blizzard conditions. I'll show you that in just a moment as we zoom in. But there's the storm system, the complicated overall big storm system in the east, subtropical moisture coming up from the deep tropics into the southwest United States, and more cold pockets of energy coming in from the Pacific, you know, tomorrow's Groundhog Day, I think regardless of what the various groundhogs around the country, there's like one in Atlanta, there's one in Philly, 
or not Philly, it's, it's in Pennsylvania, but it's in Puxatawney, um, wherever. You know, there's so many of them now, I can't keep track. And it's all just for fun anyway, but February is going to be an active month. It's going to be cold, it's going to be stormy, I'm pretty sure of that. And again, that's what it should be. You know, you're not supposed to have 70s in New England in February. That would be very bad. So this winter weather is actually somewhat of a sign of normalcy, even if we are having some pretty high snowfall rates with this storm. And you can see that reflected here in the National Watch Warning Map. There's our nor'easter. The area is impacted in the northeast United States, the coastal waters with storm warnings. And on the west coast, not much right now, but more storming is headed in that way. And let's not forget down the spine of the Appalachians here, uh, winter storm warnings for the ridges of the Smokies in that area, the Tennessee, North Carolina border counties, and then up through there some winter weather advisories, coastal advisories for parts of New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland. Um, and again, I talked about this in my update, I think yesterday morning. Um, I've traveled like a long way and it feels like I've been gone a week but yeah it was yesterday morning you know just click on the map it's weather.gov and you get to see where you're interested in maybe you're in Albany or you're in uh, what is that Hartford you know whatever maybe you're on the coast you say okay I'm over here in uh, northern New Jersey near the coast I want to know what's going on um, we'll do that later uh, so you just click on it and then you zoom in and you get the details maybe uh, of what's happening in that area. I guess it's getting hammered. It makes me look bad. But you get the idea. When it works, <laughs> maybe it's my internet at the hotel. You never know. Um, let's see if this is working better out of Mount Holly. Yeah, so some coastal flood issues down here. And you just keep clicking, and you read all about it, and you, you know what you need to know. That's what I'm trying to show you. All right, so let's talk about this. This is really interesting. Um, this band of snow, this cold conveyor belt, Instead of convectively driven um, upward motion in the cold air, this is this cold conveyor belt where the atmosphere is primed. There's convergence going on of squeezing of the atmosphere from the low pressure area. Just a lot of fascinating meteorology happening so that we get this conveyor belt of continuous heavy snow. It's cold enough throughout, and you'll see that mentioned a lot of times as an abbreviation CCB. And that is pivoting around that low. It brought a lot of snow uh, and some high rates of it to Long Island, even, in, of course, into New York City, Manhattan recently in the last few hours. And now it's pivoting into southern New England, upstate, if you, or the northern, I don't think they call it upstate Jersey, but the northern parts of New Jersey, southern New York, where I am, in Middletown, very, very heavy snowfall. Even looking out my window, it's, and I can't show you through the webcam because it's so bright, it would overwhelm you and you wouldn't see the snow, but trust me, it's snowing pretty hard here in Middletown, and that is that cold conveyor belt of energy, cold air in the atmosphere throughout all the layers for the most part. Maybe right down at our coastal areas, you could see some mixing because the Atlantic is warm relative to the land and the air around it, but other than that, the atmosphere is primed throughout the air column, and we're seeing some very, very heavy snow some of these areas are going to see close to 30 inches when all is said and done. Quite fascinating. Very disruptive, yes. Can be hazardous, yes. But I think it's really neat to see these storms. That's why I'm here. I do testing. And that brings me to this, our interactive tracking map. Again, I've talked about this before. This was developed by several, a cooperation of several of our supporters, our patrons. Through Patreon is how we all met and other social media, but we, you know, the, the funding through it and whatnot is through Patreon, this great community, and some people in that community have coding skills, and they have donated those skills to creating this incredible map. We have a radar overlay on it, all kinds of other stuff during hurricane season. You can track hurricanes. Uh, but in this case, our cameras, this is what I wanted to show you, have populated a pretty good deal of the Northeast. Uh, this one over here, start off on the southwest side near Leesburg, Virginia, one of our supporters, Tim. This is his backyard, a few inches of snow from the storm system. He's not close enough to that cold conveyor belt, you know, to get the heavy snow, but nevertheless, a few inches in his backyard. Then, as we zoom in further, it starts to get interesting here, and let me just go ahead and tell you before you say, 
wait a minute, it's not 1200 degrees. What we've done with this particular field mission is begun testing these Kestrel drop sensors, if this camera will ever pull up, uh, that transmit sensible data, temperature, humidity, pressure, dew point, and even heat, uh, well, you get a heat index calculated through the other stuff. We'll probably take that out eventually, but we're testing this. Um, I don't know why the video is not pulling up. Try it again. We'll, we'll sort of trick it into playing. Come on. Maybe there's, there it is. So back to what I was trying to say before I distracted myself by trying to get the camera to play. I want to be able to do this in hurricanes, display live data with the camera system. And we're moving in that direction using these fairly affordable Kestrel drop sensors, pair them up with a Raspberry Pi computer. All of that runs through the same hotspot that we're using to stream this live video that you see. And bingo, you have it all together. So even though there's something goofy with the temperature, uh, situation and we know what it is it has to do with the program and the fact that it's all in metric and we're trying to convert it and when it went below zero Celsius the program got confused and now it says it's 1200 degrees easily fixable but this is why we test I could test this in my backyard and I might get you know I won't notice these things but if we do it out in the field when we're kind of on the clock if you will it forces us to confront these bugs if they come up or celebrate the success that we do have and uh, the cameras are all working fine the overall transmission of the data is working great very happy with it this is our camera near Dayton New Jersey not too bad there a little bit of light snow they're plowing the roads just fine cameras a little crooked but that's my fault I think I bumped it when we left it this one though in Bloomfield is covered if it'll show up in snow come on there it is yeah the snow got all over it. It's a ah, that was a good shot too. Sometimes you lose in these situations. That's why we put a bunch of cameras out, even in hurricanes. Something might happen and we lose a feed or whatever. And that's the beauty of having a bunch of. There's a car that went by or a truck, box truck of some kind. But disregard the temperatures. We will fix that. Pressure is good. Thousand and one millibars temperature. I'm sorry, the humidity is good. These other values are a little wacky. We'll fix it and we'll be ready for when we do this uh, during hurricane season because we're testing during these winter storms. Um, here's the one I have up here in Middletown, up in a parking lot, snow covered as well. Got to go fix that one. I'm close by to that, so I'll be able to fix it. But uh, this is what it looks like out on Long Island Sound at Baiting Hollow in the Riverhead area. Um, and you can barely see through the snow covered lens. Look at Long Island Sound there. Look at that. It's like the Atlantic Ocean out there. Connecticut would be way off here in the distance and um, quite remarkable almost blizzard conditions up this way uh, because of the the pressure gradient of the wind screaming across this region down the sound um, and by the way the camera location is not precise for this one it is baiting hollow but the gentleman that provides this for us he wants some sense of um, uh, anonymity so we don't have a precise uh, spot for that cam it is baiting hollow though I just located it near Riverhead anyhow this is the camera system up in Grafton Massachusetts snow not too much not too heavy but I think that band will make it up there eventually and throughout tomorrow more heavy snow even <clears throat> as far north and east as Massachusetts finally let me show you this we do have a camera too up in Nova Scotia but look barely any snow on the ground. Why is that? I think a big part of it is that warmer Atlantic up here. Not much ice cover through here. The warmer water, uh, you get these storms that move in, you get that uh, advection of warmer marine air that comes in and you know you really need those lows to pass offshore this way to get wraparound moisture for areas like Halifax and Sluice Point here to really get a lot of snow. So as it turns out, we have a lot more snow in the United States, in the Northeast, and you'll certainly have that up in Maine as well, uh, than you do in Southwest Nova Scotia, at least for now. Kind of interesting. By the way, just real quick, pitch it for you so you know, this map is part of our Patreon system. What people support, this is one of the benefits you get. So if you want to check it out and have permanent access, 
check uh, the link in this video, patreon.com slash hurricane track. This is all part of what we do. Crowdfunded, crowdsourced, crowd programmed. Pretty cool, I think. Um, so let's look at the models out for the next few days. Sorry, I got ahead of myself here. And um, there's the low. This is the 12Z GFS. 992 millibars, like I said. Not too bad, not too deep. You know, you've seen more intense storms, but this was dumping a lot of snow, and it moves on out. After kind of stalling around for 12 to 18 hours, it finally gets out of the area with another low pressure. I mean, it just hangs around due to blocking over Greenland, believe it or not. Clears the pattern by Thursday. Kind of cold in the east, not bitter. Uh, the air is basically the coldest air is going to get kind of trapped by the Appalachians here and mainly be focused to the upper Midwest and down the Great Plains of the U.S. But enough cold air and storminess that keeps the first week or so of February kind of interesting. You know, we don't see any makings of a huge winter storm again for the foreseeable future. We're out to about a week now. Yeah, that could be interesting going out there. This is fully a week out, but that's a week away. A lot can change. You know how that works, and that's why we talk about it here, Twitter, elsewhere. You know who to follow, who to trust, and we'll watch and see together. All right? All right. Again, patreon.com slash hurricane track to get involved with this. The off-season work that we do spills over into the hurricane season, helping us to be ready for those big storms in the summer months. Uh, we love doing the testing, the support that we get from everybody. We have over 700 active members right now. That's a pretty good group of people that are supporting this project and it helps to do what we're doing now. So if you want to be a part of that, that's how you do it. All right, all right, I'm done. I'm going to get back out in a little while, take the GoPro 360 cam and try to get some uh, really cool video down by the Hudson River and uh, post that on YouTube later and um, follow on Twitter, as I said earlier, at Hurricane Track. I'll post video clips there from time to time and we'll see all right and by the way if you have interesting weather where you are tag me a few people have done that today on twitter and i'll try to retweet it if i see it but just try to remember to shoot your video horizontal please it just looks better in my humble opinion all right with that i am done i am mark sudduth hurricanetrack.com thanks as always for tuning in and giving me a part of your day hope you learned something along the way i'll be back with you again with this update next week is the weekly discussion and then on youtube live uh, hopefully later today throughout tomorrow.